I'm Tiger Height, and I'm here to make WWE SmackDown and Pro Wrestling Majestic again. Overall, I liked the show. There was one thing that I confused me, and then we need to have a conversation. But we're going to be kicking off with Asuka taking on Charlotte Flair. Is it for a title? No. Is it for a contendership? No. Is it just a match? Yes. There's nothing necessarily wrong with that, but these are two top contenders for the women's champion, and I kind of wish they talked about the whole controversy, but also, is Belair really hurt? She wasn't on the show at all, and the last time I checked, she was the champion when EO cashed in. Speaking of EO Sky, all of Damage Control come out, and EO drop kicks both of them for the disqualification. Why? This was a perfectly passable match. I mean, unless they're doing another triple threat, there was just no reason for this. You would want these two to beat each other up, right? Very strange. I like the match, though. And I guess damage control is looking a little more dangerous. There's a positive there. I'll give it an Orange Cassidy thumbs up. Up next is AJ Styles taking on Karrion Cross, and they were really promoting this as the final match between these two. I don't think this is the final match between these two, to be honest with you. It was a good match. I really liked the back and forth. The crowd was getting into it, and AJ won with Styles Clash. I think Karrion Cross didn't look weak in defeat, but I just don't think this is going to be the final interaction between these two. Do I hate it? No. Is it going anywhere? No. Could you book something a little bit better? You're damn right. So up next was an Edge segment, and he was out here for a very specific reason, and that was to challenge Sheamus for next week's show. And it's next week's show because that is number one in his hometown, and number two, he's 25th anniversary. It's next week. But he was out there to challenge Sheamus. And I looked back, and I thought in my head, and I think they're right. I don't think these two ever had an interaction with each other. After 10, 15 years, I think Sheamus has been in the company for 15 years. At the very least, 10. These two have never wrestled each other. I could be wrong. Comment if I am. Probably. These two had a nice little throwback where Sheamus in his YouTube workout channel had Edge on one day a couple of years ago, I think like four years ago, and Edge was like, yeah, this is the moment where I knew that I was ready to get back into the ring. I like that. I like that little throwback there, and it really showcases a lot of humility and a lot of, like, friendship between these two that I know is a, the real deal. I liked it. I think this was perfectly acceptable. Straightforward. This is going to be a good match. Full thumbs up. LA Knight taking on Top Dalla. Yeah. Sorry, I had to do it at least once. And it was a fine match. Obviously, LA Knight won with BFT. He had a promo after, but the thing is, what are we doing with LA? Can we have a program? Can we do a rivalry? Can we do something other than these random matches? I get it. He's on the show, still popular, but I think he would be a lot more popular, and you can capitalize on it if you put him in a program, then he would be on TV constantly instead of in these random matches against essentially jobbers. Eh. Orange Cassidy thumbs up. The match was better than I expected. Ashante the Adonis looked like he was going to go hiking. I thought that was kind of funny. Designer backpacks are weird. This is where I got confused. So it was Santos Escobar challenging Austin Theory for the United States champion. And there was a pre-match attack a little bit before backstage where Santos' leg got hurt. He was walking out to the ring and obviously we had another attack from Austin Theory attacking the leg. But then out of nowhere, Adam Pierce put Rey Mysterio in this spot. Was Rey Mysterio supposed to beat Santos Escobar a couple of weeks ago in this Invitational? That would have been a really bad choice. And this was too. Santos is popular. He is the future. And they are not striking while, you, while the iron is hot. Rey Mysterio, he's a Hall of Famer. He's already popular. He could kick a bag of puppies and people would blame the puppies these two had a fine match i liked it and Rey mysterio won with dropping the dime Rey mysterio is united states champion i think this was always the thing but because Rey mysterio got hurt santos had to be put in this position but i thought santos was the right call it's so weird 
Are they going to break up LWO? Is Santos going to become a heel now? I think he should stay within the United States Championship picture. But now Rey Mysterio, who's his stable mate, is the United States Champion. I'm so confused. I It was wrestled well. It was sold well. And Theory's probably going to stay in this picture for a while. I don't mind that. But can we have some continuity? They should have done it with Santos. Santos should be United States Champion right now. And I like Rey Mysterio. But it should be Santos. Look to the future. Orange Cassidy thumbs up at, at the end of the day. And here's where we're going to have a conversation. Bloodline segment. We had Jimmy Uso's explanation. He attacked Jay not because he wanted to... How can I word this? Jimmy attacked Jay so Jay doesn't turn into Roman. Because essentially, it is absolute power corrupts absolutely. That was his justification. Is it a justification? I see it, but at the same time, I don't see it. And also, we had a whole snafu. Jade comes out. That's when the explanation happens. Jimmy walks out. You have Roman Reigns and Solo Sokoa getting attacked by Jay. He got the advantage on both of them. Jay calls Jimmy back to the ring. And Jimmy thought that Jay was going to hug him. Jay super kicks him. And then Jay quits. Like, the, the company. I'm confused. There would have been a much better way to do this, but here's where we're going to have a conversation. I'm hearing through the grapevine that this is an IRL situation where Jay's contract is up at the end of this month. And he has not re-signed with the company. And to what I'm hearing is that he wants to take some time off from wrestling altogether. And then probably go back to the E. But you have the AEW cult saying that he's going to AEW. Okay, he ain't going to AEW. It, it just, I cannot see it. Also, if Jay was really leaving, they would do it quietly. They wouldn't do this big rigmarole. Seriously, they wouldn't have done that. They would have had Jimmy come out, explain why he did it, and then it's meant no, no more mentioning it. They would have quietly negotiated. That would have been it. Because Jay did this, I am convinced that he is going to resign like what CM Punk did all those years ago. Same situation. How are they going to follow that up? I don't know. But Jimmy is not with the bloodline. I am going to assume that Roman is going to face Jimmy now. And Jay's absence in him leaving the company is going to be the justification. They're waiting till WrestleMania for Jimmy to face Jay. Is Jimmy the guy to be Roman? Nah, I don't think so. I think Jay is, well, Cody is the guy. But we're going to have these two wrestle, Jimmy and Roman. And that's when Jay is going to return. Roman is on a limited schedule, so if Jay wants to take some time off, take some time off. Let Jimmy have the program with Roman, then come back and face Jimmy, screwing him out of reins. That delays Roman facing Cody for Mania, and then you set up the Usos all at the same time. That's my theory, and I'm right all the time. And that was SmackDown. Did you like the show? Let me know in the comments either right next to me over here or down below in the description wherever you're watching this on. Subscribe to the channels on YouTube and on TikTok. Become a patron at patreon.com forward slash mpwma and also get some hats. All of that will be linked in the bio or in the description. And as always, be majestic.